You've been learning Blender for a while now and now you're wondering how can I actually make money with this? Maybe even turn this into a full-time job? Well, you've come to the right place. I've asked myself the same question many times and over the past few years I've tried out a lot of different methods to earn money with Blender. Some worked well, others didn't. So in this video I'm going to break down four real ways you can earn money using Blender what the advantages and disadvantages are and some helpful tips on how to actually succeed that worked for me. In the end I'm also going to break down what I do currently to make a full time living from being a 3D artist. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and let's jump right in. Let's start with one of the most common ways to make money with Blender. Working at a studio. Games, film, VFX or animation. This is often the first big goal for many artists landing a job at a professional studio. The advantages are quite obvious. You get to work on real productions, maybe even on your favorite game franchise or your favorite TV show. You are surrounded by other experienced artists, which is a massive opportunity to grow fast and learn industry workflows and just improve your skills. Also, if you're the only 3D artist in your friend group, suddenly being in a room full of people who speak your creative language can feel really amazing. Also, you have a structure, steady paychecks, clear tasks and a defined role in the pipeline. Also, just being able to say, I worked in this big project you've probably heard of can be really cool. But there are also some disadvantages. Even though remote work has become more common, many studios still expect you to live in the same city. That might mean relocating, which can be expensive and stressful, and also keeps you further away from family and the people you love. Also, the industry has been rocky in recent years, especially in games and film. Mass layoffs and studio closures have made headlines and competition for jobs is higher than ever. Also, working in a big team means you are one of many contributing to this larger project. Although this can really help you build connections with your team, it can also feel like you don't make as much of a difference. So with the advantages and disadvantages out of the way, how can you actually get a job in a studio? How did I get a job in the VFX industry? The truth is, just sending an application isn't enough. Most studios rely on internal referrals. Where I worked, they went around and asked people for recommendations. You could even earn some bonus if that artist then got picked. Meaning they might not even look at the application. So what did I do? I reached out to individual artists working at the studio often through LinkedIn. I didn't ask for a job, but instead asked for feedback on my work. And most importantly, I then actually implemented that feedback and came back with my improvements. This then helped build a real connection with these artists. And months later, when I finally applied, they already knew me and not just as a name in a pile of resumes, but as someone who takes initiative and improves. But of course, you already need to be at a good enough level for this to work. And one of the best ways to prepare yourself and improve your skills, especially when you are not surrounded by other professionals, is online learning. And that brings us to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives. It's packed with thousands of classes taught by experts, so no matter your level, beginner or advanced, you will find something that fits your needs. You can explore topics like 3D modeling, animation, sculpting and freelancing that will really help you improve your skills. But Skillshare isn't just for 3D art. There are also great classes on productivity, illustration and so much more. I can really recommend the classes by Ali Abdal, who teaches you all about productivity and how to get more done in a day. This really helped me avoid all the distractions that come with being online and owning a smartphone. So if that is something you have been struggling and are looking to improve, you might want to give it a try. The good thing with Skillshare is that you don't just watch, you get to put what you learn into practice right away. And you can even share your projects with other members for feedback. So the first 500 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So give it a try today. The second method is freelancing. Working freelance from home can be a dream for many. Total freedom, flexible hours and the ability to work with clients from all around the world. 
your location independent, meaning you can live wherever you want, close to family or in whatever country you want. And if you have a good laptop, you can even travel while working. So you set your own schedules, want to take a day off, you don't need anyone's permission really. Also, you have full control over what kinds of projects you take on and often also how you want to approach them creatively and what to charge. Of course, the downside are that you are fully responsible for your own finances. Taxes, accounting, contracts, it's not just all fun and depending on where you live, it can get pretty complicated. Also, there's no guaranteed income, meaning one month might be amazing and the next could be dead quiet. That lack of stability can be stressful and especially when you're starting out, there is no guarantee for that you can actually make a living from it. Also, working alone sounds great in theory, but for some people it can be hard to stay motivated. Without a team or fixed structure, it's easy to lose momentum or procrastinate, especially on long or repetitive projects. But the biggest challenge is finding clients, especially recurring ones. So, how do I get clients? The key is visibility. You can be the best artist in the world, if they don't know you exist, you won't get any work. So, you need to somehow get people's attention and in today's world this means posting your work on social media. But that is easier said than done. Just uploading some screenshots or final renders most likely won't cut it. There are a lot of great artists out there, so you need to stand out. What I found really helped was to post short form content on sites like TikTok, Instagram or YouTube. By using trendy music and a bit of creativity, you can reach a lot of people. Here's an example. A while back I did this World War II bomber animation. From that I made multiple short clips showing the final animation, each with a different twist. Be it comparing it to the viewport, showing different stages of the project or showcasing my compositing work. From one quick animation I made multiple short clips really getting multiple chances of being picked up by the algorithm. The good thing is your project does not need to be perfect. Some of my most successful clips were ones people had some strong opinions on, meaning they wrote comments which made the algorithm pick it up. I can recommend to spend one or two days and create as many short clips as you can. From old and new projects. Both YouTube and Instagram allow you to schedule posts in advance, meaning you put the work in once and then have a clip be posted every day for the next weeks. Not every post gets attention, but some will and that's when people start messaging you. To be honest, many just want free advice or free help, but sometimes someone offers you paid work and that is how it starts. So far, every freelance job I had came to me. I never cold pitched anyone. Next up, selling digital products. That could be Blender add-ons, 3D models, shader packs, HDRIs, you name it. It really sounds amazing making something once and sell it while you sleep. But here's the truth, it's a lot harder than it looks. First, the advantages. It's scalable, so once you created a product, which usually is digital, you can sell it as often as you want. Also, if you're really lucky and people like the product, you can earn a lot of money in a short amount of time. Also, you can help people while earning money if your product solves a real problem. The disadvantages are that you need a product that really delivers value. A few random HDRIs won't cut it. It has to stand out, either by solving a problem, being better or offering something unique. Once it's live, that's only half the job. You still need to actively promote it, constantly. I for example sell on platforms like Gumroad and Superhive, but what drives the sales is the marketing. I create YouTube videos, short reels, Reddit posts, everything to show people how it works and why they need it. But once I stop promoting it, the sales will quickly plummet. So it's not as easy as just creating a product and being done with it. You need to put in constant work to keep the sales up. So how can you sell your first product? The best way is to create something you need yourself. Something that would improve your workflow and make life easier. Before you start though, research if there are already similar products out there and if so, if you can improve on them. If it solves a problem many people have, there will be a market for it. 
This product does not have to be perfect for you to sell it and you don't have to spend weeks on it if you don't want. Once you've uploaded it, create some promotional videos and posts and try to get in your first sale. The trick is not to overthink it and just start. Running a YouTube channel can sound very attractive. Creating your own videos, be it tutorials, project breakdowns or longer animations sounds really fulfilling and independent. Not having to work on other people's project but creating your very own sounds really creative. You could make your own decisions, work from home and not having to answer to anyone. But in reality it's not as straightforward. For once, if your channel is in the creative niche, you probably won't earn too much with YouTube AdSense. This varies from video to video and is greatly dependent on your topic. But compared to niches like finance, you make very little. That is why most creative YouTube channels earn their money from sponsorships. If you get good amount of views on your videos regularly, this can be a great source of income. Just make sure you pick a topic you are passionate about and where you know you can create lots of videos. It's easy to have a few video ideas, but if you want to succeed, you need to post consistently for a long period. So how did I grow my YouTube channel? Well, the main tip, as already said, is posting consistently. Also, you won't get many views in the beginning, but that is actually a good thing. This way, there isn't really an excuse to just start uploading. Chances are not many people are going to watch it, but if it's really really good, there is a chance for it to go viral and jumpstart your YouTube career. So just start posting. Making the first step often is enough to change your whole life. And if you want to change my whole life, then consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get access to all my project files, my Gumroad products and exclusive tutorials. And you will help me keep making videos and eventually short films. So check out my Patreon link in the description. So what is the best way to earn money with Blender? Honestly, don't limit yourself to just one method. These paths often overlap anyway. For example, I currently work freelance from home, sell products, upload to YouTube and run a Patreon. And if the opportunity comes, I'd consider working at a studio again. Having multiple income streams just gives you more stability, more creative freedom and more chances to grow. I hope this helps you understand the different ways you can earn money with Blender and gave you some ideas for your own journey. With that said, have a great day. Bye.